What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today I present my defense for instant coffee. Now the origin of instant coffee is actually quite debated. Some people say it happened in the late 1700s, some in the early 1800s, but what a lot of people tend to trace it back to is to New Zealand, to a guy named Strong, and what you had there was something that was referred to as soluble coffee, and then you had it kind of again in the US in 1901, and then it proliferated from there, becoming its most notable once Nestle worked with Brazil as a country who had a ton of extra coffee one year in order to create their Nescafe back in the late 1930s. And that's really when the boom began with instant coffee. Just to kind of simplify things, a lot of people are confused on how instant coffee is made. The original method would be kind of a spray method, and that is when you take coffee, you extract it at a really highly concentrated level. So espresso typically sits around that 9 to 11 percent TDS, which means 9 to 10 percent of that beverage is actually coffee extracted and other particles. We would go about double that for this instant coffee, so around 20 percent, which would be that TDS. They would take coffee, they would roll it through the, like roller mills or different type of industrial mills, and then they would push it with a lot of steam and pressure in order to extract as much of that as absolutely possible in order to create a highly extracted, highly concentrated, potent extractant. Then they would take it and they would evaporate a lot of the water by heating it up for a long period of time in order to make a really thick consistency that was closer to 60% extractant. Then after that, they would drop it into this kind of tower they've created with really hot air that had no humidity. So as it atomized out into this open space inside of this long tower where it had a, f a long drop, it had time and enough surface area to immediately evaporate the excess water in it, giving you particles that would fall into the bottom. And that is essentially what you have in something like the Nescafe Classic. This is the effect of after it's being sprayed into that really hot, devoid of moisture tank, it comes out and just drops to the bottom looking like this. Of course, to maximize profits, they would maximize extraction so they could use less grams of coffee per dose as possible in order to give you the same effect as a normal cup of coffee. Now, one study shows that in a typical 225 milliliter cup of coffee with this instant coffee, you get around 66 milligrams of caffeine. Whereas in a 225 milliliter cup of a home brewed coffee, you'd get somewhere closer to 115 milligrams of caffeine. Caffeine is pretty readily extracted. You don't need to extract too much of a bean to get all of its caffeine content. And so whenever you're using a bigger dose, which is likely what happened with that homebrew because it's pretty impossible to replicate the conditions that they have in factories at home, you're getting a lower extraction, you're doing a higher dose, you're getting more caffeine a priori. What you have to also consider is because they are pushing the extraction as much as possible with super high temperatures in excess of 100 degrees Celsius, you're also over extracting the coffee and getting a lot of less than ideal flavor compounds out of it. All of that, plus the fact that a lot of this coffee, especially from Nestle and these types of companies, they're using really low grade coffee because you're losing so many aromas in this process that they're just relying on cheaper coffees because it, it, it just doesn't really matter. People who are using this are wanting that quick fix, they just add some hot water to it and they're good to go about their day. But I think that is a big travesty in the instant coffee world. We have a very sustainable re relative to other ways of brewing coffee that should really be explored a bit more fully. Now what about something like Nestle Gold? Why does it have that look that is a bit more crystallized and bigger and a bit more uniform and nicer to look at? It's arguably all Arabica as opposed to Robusta, which tends to be a lot cheaper than Arabica. But in addition to that, they use a different process in order to create their instant coffee. They actually first do a similar thing to this. They grind the coffee up, they do a super heavy extraction to make sure it's a high concentration, and then they do the same thing where they uh, evaporate a lot of that water in order to make a really thick, almost chocolate-looking consistency, like a thick caramel sauce consistency of coffee. And as this is going out on a conveyor belt, they put it into an incredibly cold chamber down to negative 50 Celsius. And the idea is to flash freeze this as quickly as possible to retain as many of those aromas as we can. This is actually something we've been talking about a lot lately, which is colder temperatures can kind of freeze or hold on to these aromatic compounds that we might otherwise lose. 
So coffee, the whole experience is based on these volatile organic compounds. There are over a thousand that are released throughout that roasting process. So one of our goals in brewing coffee is to retain as many of those as possible, assuming that the ones that we're losing early actually contribute positively to the final cup, which that might sound silly, but not all of these aromas are good aromas. There are some that might not smell very good or taste very good once our body kind of takes it in and interprets it. And that's when this whole frozen compound thing comes into play where people are taking frozen whiskey rocks to put under their espresso shot in order to kind of chill the first bits of the extractants. Or as I showed in this video here with the Samo Bloom using cooler water at the beginning just to lessen the amount of evaporation potential so that we can hold in or maintain a lot of those organic compounds. Now the same thing is going on here. They're immediately flash freezing this and then it goes through and is broken up into these small, tiny little pit bits that look sort of like this, but a lot darker. Now after this is what is really interesting. They'll take those bits of coffee that have been broken up and they put it into a low pressure tube for a few hours in order to allow the process of sublimation to occur so that it goes directly from ice to gas, ridding completely all of these little crystals of all of that water content, or for the most part, that water content. This allows you to retain a lot more of the aromas and gives you a higher quality brew in the end. But does it replicate a freshly brewed cup of coffee? Well, of course not. It's still going through a lot of these different processes. We don't know the cleanliness of them. We don't know how they're extracting. We do know that it is a really high extraction and you're likely getting a lot more than you're really wanting from the coffee bean. So it's really optimized for maximum profits. But now there are more and more people realizing the sustainability aspect of instant coffee, the fact that a home user can put it into room temperature water or just lightly warmed water and it'll immediately dissolve because it was brewed before and you just dehydrated it. In addition to that, you don't have any filter waste. You don't have any plastic machines or any type of machines that you need to put electricity in. You can take a stove top kettle, heat up some water, toss it in and you're good to go whenever it's made at scale, it's able to have overall a lot less waste. And there are loads of papers out there that show unequivocally this is the most sustainable way to consume your coffee is using instant coffee. Now, of course, some of that is taken into account the extremely high extraction yields that they are achieving with instant coffees, which is less coffee waste. And of course, if we're wanting it to taste a bit better, we're likely wanting to lessen that extraction yield to a more palatable area. But in the end, with all things considered, this is a heavily sustainable route whenever you're wanting to drink some coffee, especially if you're away from your home setup. Now, this is not an apologia to throw out everything you have and go straight to instant, but instead it is to shine a light on an often overlooked area of coffee where people, including myself for a long, long time, tend to stay away from. Now, instant coffee, can easily be eschewed and looked at with disgust because of things like this. But as I said earlier, there was a nice change in around that 2015, 2016 time when you had some companies that were more mindful of specialty coffee wanting to take this kind of technology and bringing it with higher quality coffees where we're not taking bug infested, low quality coffees or uh, majority Robusta or just coffees that aren't very tasty and really relying on those to create instant, which has given it such a bad name in the specialty coffee world or in the coffee in the, or in the home enthusiast world where we're used to really nice homebrewed coffees. But it's taking this idea and applying higher quality coffees and a bit more mindful approach to it in order to see what can happen. Now, some of these early adopters were people like Sudden Coffee, which went out of business in 2020, but they started in around 2016 or so, or 2015. And you also have Voila Coffee that started in about 2017, and they closed their doors in 2021. You also have Swift Coffee, which has been around for a while and is probably the biggest specialty coffee, instant coffee manufacturer. So Swift has opened their doors and they make instant coffee for other specialty roasters throughout the world. So some include Ruby, Verve, and Tandem, but they have a lot of other roasters that they offer that they take the coffee in, make it instant, and then send it back into their pre-made little packages. But then you also have roasters over the years who have taken it upon themselves to make instant in-house. I know back in 2019, The Barn released their own instant coffee. I know that black and white roasters in North Carolina make their own instant coffee. And of course, people like Luminous that I'll be featuring today make their own instant coffee using a brew bomb and creating it in-house as well. So it's becoming more and more accessible, this way of making instant coffee, and which I think is a very important step in the specialty coffee world. 
Even if it's not my style of coffee, if it's from a specialty roaster, I know that the coffee was sourced well, I'm more than happy to drink that, especially in comparison to one of these others. So for instance, the trip I just went on to the US, I brought Lutfeuer and I used their natural processed Brazil. I'm not historically a big fan of naturally processed Brazilian coffees, I'm not a big fan of natural processed coffees in general, but I brought it anyway because it's a much better option than what I'm finding on airplanes and in other areas, which tend to be like illy little single uh, serve packets. Is because we're not relying solely on these chocolatey, uh, lower quality coffees, even if they are Arabica, we're able to experiment in this world of different flavor profiles. Now with instant coffee, you won't get as bold or as intense of an experience as you would with the same coffee in a home pour over or in like a batch brew or something along those lines, but it is a massive step up and is something I think will continue to improve as people with the resources and the desire and drive actually begin to focus their time on this. We are using old methods that were kind of created by the stalwarts of the industry, these people who are maximizing profit with cheaper coffees, wanting the highest extraction possible. We are just now dipping our toes, the specialty industry is, into these different types of methods, making small changes here and there in order to optimize the system. But there have not yet been any massive changes with any of them. Of course, we have some companies like Cometeer or like Swift that claim that they have proprietary brewing information that they don't share to the public, and that might be true. But in all reality, the differences that I'm perceiving between their instant coffees and some of these others that are done with really nice coffees and with a really fine attention to detail, the difference is not an incredible difference. Now, of course, Cometeer is different. They're doing something completely differently. They're not making a powder. It's kind of an ice capsule. And I will admit that with those, I have noticed a bit more of a clean acidity, but I'm not one to want to ship a massive box to me with dry ice in order to maintain a frozen capsule. I'd much prefer to invest our time and energy and collective resources into this more powder shelf stable type of instant coffee experience. So I'm gonna make a bowl of each and I'm gonna double check their concentration. I want the concentration to be identical. So I'm going to get out my VST refractometer, which is right here. And I'm gonna ensure that they are all within 0.05 of a percentage of each other, just to ensure that that is not something that's really playing a big part on my palate whenever I'm tasting through them. I'll talk about the aroma, we'll talk about the taste, and I'll essentially just put them in the order uh, where I enjoy them and maybe try to make a guess as to what is what, though I don't really have much experience tasting these except for the Nescafe Gold. Might have a little bit of an idea of what this tastes like. I definitely know what this tastes like. I have not yet had the Vietnam and I've had like one or two of the Ethiopia. All right, so I have brewed all six. I have gotten them within actually 0.02 of a TDS from each. So they're spanning between 1.48 and 1.52, depending on the coffee. One thing to note though, is when I was brewing the Luminous, there se it seemed to be a little difficult for all the particles to really dissolve very easily. Uh, it, I'd pour the water in and there were still loads of floaters in there. Um, that was a, That's a bit frustrating because you, wanted, you wanna be able to have it immediately go down. Using 85 Celsius water, you'd think that'd be pretty immediate. With the three uh, Nescafe and the Delta ones, they were very much immediate. Now this could be a difference between how they're approaching making the instant coffee. It could just be because of nicer quality machinery when they're making it. I did notice that the Luminous as well as the Luchtfeuer, the powder was a lot more finely ground. And so I, I think that is also going to affect its solubility. Uh, whenever they're kind of bigger chunks, they seem to dissolve a lot more quickly. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's just at the end of the situation or at the end of the process, they're actually putting it through a grinder. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, let's have these mixed up. Oh, Hugo is coming to mix the drinks up. He's coming to mix the drinks up. So I All right, so I'm gonna try not to look down because there is a slight color difference. The uh, more specialty coffees tend to be a lot clearer looking and a little bit darker in, in the color, whereas the other ones look like they have that faux crema and maybe some colloids floating around. So I'm gonna try to just stare at you, un uninterrupted eye contact. If you don't like slurping, just know, trigger warning for those with misphonia, we're gonna do it now. That one's actually pretty sweet, like surprisingly so, with a little bit of acidity in it actually, but there is a roast element to it that I'm not a fan of. So this is. Ooh, that one is rough. That one tastes, that one's rough. Um, I can't really even give you notes on it. It's just rough. It tastes like stale, uh, like really roasty coffee uh, with a little side of rubber and um, car tire. So that's the same thing, but you know, it is what it is. That has like marshmallows about it. I'm, I'm gonna guess that's an Cafe Gold. That's the least, that's not offensive at all. Doesn't taste specialty. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that on one sip. Um, it's like something 
I could actually drink and not hate myself for. Um, but yeah, it's got like a, not a sweet marshmallow, but there's like a marshmallow thing about it. That's a funky, that's either the Vietnam or the Ethiopia. I've not had the Vietnam, so I need to keep tasting and see which is which. Oh, yep, that's either Delta or the other um, Nescafe. Yowza! Okay, ooh, that was roughy duffy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so either this or this is the Brazil and the other is the other one from Luminous. I'm not quite sure because... Okay, that's got to be... I bet that's the Vietnam and that's the Brazil. So I'm going to say this is the Brazil from Lutfur. This is the Vietnam from Luminous and then I believe it was this one that was the Ethiopia. Or my guess for Ethiopia, definitely the most acidic one. And I believe it was this I thought was the gold because it was least offensive. <laughs> yep, marshmallowy. This one, <laughs> I'm gonna guess is, oof, oof. <laughs> oof, I'm gonna guess this one's Nescafe and this one's Delta, but that's just a pure guess. I made a mess because I wasn't looking down. Let's check them. Brazil would be six, so I'm looking for a six here. Let's see. Yep, it's a six. All right. Very good. Very good. This one I said I thought was the Vietnam. Vietnam would be five. Let's see. And it is the five. All right. We're on a roll. This would be the four. Let's see. And it is the four. All right. So I guessed gold and then I guessed the Nescafe Classic and I guessed Delta off to the side. So gold would be three. No, it's two. Wow. That's the classic. Wow. So this would be three. This is the gold. I got the gold and the classic mixed up and that would leave this to be Delta. So I actually preferred the classic to the gold. Now I got to taste again now that I know what they are. That's very weird. Yes. This one was least offensive. I stand by it. That one's, that one tastes better actually. I'm excited about the direction this is going. I hope more and more brands pick this up and try to implement it into their workflow or more brands like Swift will come out and they'll help people with workflow on trying to set up their own system or people like Luminous where they will help consult your brand in order to create your own uh, um, in-house instant coffee. But I think this is a big area that really needs to be focused on because by 2030, there will be almost double the amount of coffee drinkers in the world that predictions say. And an absolute massive chunk of that tends to be instant coffees. I saw one uh, number saying that about 50% of coffee drinkers in the world are consuming instant, but of course there's so many numbers out there with pods and everything else, who knows. But in all reality, instant is something that will not be going away and it shouldn't because sustainability factor is through the roof. It's a very good option for people who don't want to faff around with equipment. It's a, it's a solid, cheaper option. And if we can get more and more specialty roasters onto this and creating this crystallized form, this powdered form of a really nice brew using their equipment so that all you need is some good water, then I think that we're really upping the accessibility into specialty coffee. Now, I don't want to mislead you. These are not nearly as good as if I were to take this whole bean and brew it myself. They're simply not. But they're a much better option than a lot of other things that are available out there. But anyway, I just wanted to come on, do a little defense of instant coffee and to hopefully put into your mind its importance and how we should as a community band together to encourage companies in order to invest some time and some effort and some science and some resources into creating more and more qualitative options for instant coffee. I know that I love having one in my backpack at all times. I'm sure that a lot of you rely on it at times and let's make sure that specialty doesn't get left behind and perhaps some of you watching will have a brilliant idea on how to retain even more volatile organic compounds. But anyway, that is enough for me today. I hope that you learned something new and I hope that you brew something tasty. Anyway, that's it. Cheers.